Good morning, everyone. How are you? Um, it is Monday, August 24th. And I'm so grateful that I get to meet with you Monday, Wednesday, Friday, because that means I get up and I take a shower and wash my hair. Speaking of hair, tomorrow, um, Lindsay's going to cut it. Yay! So you'll be able to see my eyebrows. Maybe she doesn't like it when my eyebrows show, but I, I, I want my eyebrows. Uh, we're gonna, she's gonna cut it in her garage, so we'll be outside. So here is, I got a bunch of stuff to go over for you guys, okay? Um, first of all, we are fairly close to the big fire that is in uh, Central California. California is on fire and it is bad. So I thought I would show you the map and you can see Livermore there, and then here's the fire. I think it's about 350,000 acres right now. And this is just one of the fires. And um, it's the second largest fire in California history. My guess is it will become the first fire. I mean, the biggest one. So what started this whole thing, it's all over California. Just go Google California fire were lightning strikes. And we don't really get lightning stri strikes in California. We just don't. And I think I shared some pictures last week. I mean, it was wild. I've never seen anything like it in my life. They're saying tonight it might start in again. For us, the air quality is just absolutely horrible. So what happened, like yesterday, it was moderate and I could go for a walk, it was no big deal. But like right now, you can see where Livermore is, it's extremely unhealthy. And it was interesting because, oh, let me show you this picture. My daughter sent me this, that's my town. Yikes, I don't know how she got it. But yesterday, this was interesting, all of a sudden it just got dark like it is right now. And we back onto an arroyo were about maybe two football fields away. First it's the school, and then it's a park, and then the Arroyo. And I'm going to John, oh my gosh, the Arroyo's on fire. So we, we I grabbed my phone, we went out there, and I called uh, 911, they put me through to the fire department, and they basically said, unless you, unless you see flames, don't call. And what's happening right now is that that fire, the winds have shifted and have picked up. So we're getting socked in with it. So that's what that was about. And then when I was walking back from the Arroyo, I got super winded and I know it was the crappy air. Uh, they called back and it was a really nice gentleman, a fireman. And he just said, he said, explained what was happening. Thank you. And I said, well, I'm going home and I'm, I'm getting ready to evacuate. And he goes, you don't have to evacuate. He said, it's not going to jump to Livermore. But my daughter said, don't be a dumb word. And she said, don't be stupid. You've got the chance. And so we started thinking about, okay, what are, what do we really need? And things like I hadn't thought of like my meds. I hadn't thought of a lot of that stuff. And then Adair goes, and what are you going to do about grandma D? And so it's just, I didn't sleep well last night and I think it's because the adrenaline was kicking up of what do I really need? What really, when it gets down to it, a lot of this is just stuff, you know? So I did make a decision. John brought this up yesterday. I am going to take a suitcase of quilts and ship them to my friend who lives up on the Mendocino coast and let them be housed there. As of yesterday, I just chose three quilts and that was it. But I thought, if I have time, let's just get them up there. And she was all down for that. So that's what's going on here. If I'm a little weird today, God grant me some grace. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I want to bring this up right now. We're going to have another tool school tomorrow. It is at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which means 10 o'clock Pacific Time. And you can pre-register. Now, people are having a really hard time pre-registering. One of the issues is, it's, it, this is new technology, guys. I know this is the second time, but again, this is new. If you are on a smartphone, maybe you should go do it on your iPad or your computer. The other thing is I went to register myself and it wouldn't let me register 
And what I discovered today is that if you, if you start to register and you have autofill, it won't let you do it. So just, John said, just delete your stuff and then just re-enter it by hand. And the reason you want to pre-register is that you can save 10 bucks on school shoot, school tool. This is what I'm talking about, shipping. <laughs> um, so, so I want to be very, very clear that this is not a TQS event. These things are not shipping from us. It is a direct event with RNK Distributing out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Because last time there seemed to be some confusion thinking we were hosting it. No, Quilter Select RNK is hosting it. And that, if you have any issues, that's who you're gonna go to, okay? Thank you, Brandy, for not quitting last time. <laughs> So I actually am quilting on my quilt now. I had a little sew along with two of my friends for three hours yesterday via Zoom. And I'm pretty excited with that. I'll share how I'm doing that on Wednesday. But in the meantime, let's take a look at what some of you guys are doing. Um, oh, oh, this is a, oh, we have problems. Okay, I forgot to talk about problems. Um, so this is from Sandra and she is just like beside herself that things are um, not coming out square. And so Sandra, I hope you don't mind I'm sharing this because this is, I really feel that we all have the opportunity to learn from each other. What I would do, because guys, this happens, right? It happens. What I would do is I would, let's talk about that upper left hand side that is vertical. I would have kind of pulled it because I know there's no bias there, pulled it so that that little blue triangle lined up exactly with the white triangle and then put the big part on the bottom and, and ease it in. That's what I would do. And then in the upper right, I would do the same thing. Uh, without looking at it, I can't check your seam allowances. I mean, what looks good to me is that all your points are floating a quarter inch from the edge. So that part looks really good to me. That's how I would cheat that. Don't you love that? I'm a cheater. Let's go. And then I've got some that I actually want to talk to you about. Questions here. Okay. Um, somebody asked, where does pink fall on the color wheel? To me, if I'm looking at pink, I will put my color wheel at red and then look at all the relationships because really pink is just red dummied down, right? That's, that's how I would do it. How to wash um, the hand eyes. Okay, you guys, um, would, I would use Centropol or I would use Retain if I'm pre-washing along with the Shout color catcher. If you're using Centropol, it tells you to do it in hot water, if you can believe that. And I've shared before that I have an old fashioned sewing machine with an agitator, and I think it helps beat up the fabric some and get it out. You may have to do this a couple times. I'm getting letters from you, and I'm thinking the Shout, um, is it Shout? Yeah, Shout color catchers probably aren't going to cut the mustard completely. You're gonna need the help of Centropol, which wicks out the color, or Retain, which retains the color within the fabric. So, okay, Polly and Bobbin. It would have been nice if I had actually printed out the whole question. This is what I'm talking about. So, um, Polly and Bobbin. I like the polyester in my bobbin, the 80 weight. I use it all the time. I feel free to mix it with other fibers on top. We've learned a lot about working with exotic thread, for lack of better words, or different threads, from Bob Purcell. And when you're working with poly, it's not the poly that you got at, you know, um, I can't even remember the name of the old stores, but you know, the 25 cent polyester stuff. It's not like that. It's beautiful, beautiful, fibrous um, um, stuff to work with. The other thing is that with the poly in your bobbin, you're going to have a whole lot less uh, gunk, you know, like fur balls and all that kind of stuff. So of course I use mine, which is Quilter Select 80 weight. And we do have it in the TQS store. 
Before I had the 80 weight, I used Libby Lehman's bottom line with Superior. The finer the thread, the better your accuracy will play out. And I feel free to mix it with everything on top. All right? Okay, then somebody asked about, I keep saying that the inner border can throw the math off. There's a quilt I'm going to share, and I'll talk about that there. All right? And that was K. Um... Oh, then Karen asked, do, do I, let's say I got a fat quarter or I've got, you know, half a yard of fabric. Do I square it up before I cut? No, but I do make sure that the two salvages or the two edges are together up here and that it doesn't go weird on the bottom because sometimes if it gets cut weird off the bolt, if you go and try and line it up, it's going to get this weird wrinkle in it. Basically, you just have to take care of business on the one edge that you're going to be cutting from. Then Barbara asked, what are these, these grids, these grids in the book? In the book on page eight, it's a grid number index. And so you've got here a two grid, a three grid, a four grid. And I, I'm not quite sure why they put it in the book other than if perhaps you wanted to draft it in another size. And if you wanted to draft it in another size, like, okay, let's take this baby bunting right here. Basically, to me, it's it's a four patch. It's a four grid. So if I want to make it larger, if I go to 15, what's half of 15? 15 half of 15 would be seven and a half. And then half of seven, no, you could divide that out. It helps you do the math work to see if it will work out. So for instance... I can't even go there. My brain's too foggy. But that's it, it, it's kind of trying to educate you that blocks are composed differently. And you'll find some of the blocks in this book do not come with six-inch cutting numbers, and it's because the numbers don't fit into that grid. I hope that answers that, Barbara, because I was kind of like, I don't know, man. Oh, and then Debbie, okay, Debbie said she has got wants to add some applique in her um on her quilt and I, I think that'd be fabulous the next one i want to do applique on and what i said is that when you okay i think this is eight i don't think i can tell you this is nine inch finished okay which means this would be three inch three inch three inch okay i said when you put it on point it gets larger this the size of the block doesn't change but this across here is about 13 inches. Well, let's see what it is. In the back of the book, if it's 9 inches and you put it on point, it finishes at 12 and 3 quarters. So rather than going 9, 9, 9, you go here. You've almost got, you've got 12 and 3 quarters. So you see how the quilt's going to get bigger faster. So that's what I'm talking about. And I can see how that would be completely confusing completely confusing with what i was saying so those are the questions that i didn't get to on friday um they came in after or i just didn't get to but you know what when you do have questions do feel free to get them to me via facebook and or customer service at the quiltshow.com attention brandy or a, send to alex send to alex okay so that brandy doesn't even have to deal with it or her sister melissa Okay, we just did that. Let's see what Helen has going on here. So I spoke about uh, sashing on Friday and how I don't really care for it. Oh, but wait, it's perfect in this. And one of the reasons to me it's perfect is because you're floating the background black that much bigger. You're floating those blocks. I think this is absolutely wonderful. This is a case of where the sashing makes a ton of sense. I adore this. And I also, when I put it up, I go, oh my gosh, you haven't put any white in it, Helen. And it's absolutely, it's so rich. It's jewel-like. Okay, then this is Peggy's. Okay, Peggy, I think, okay, Peggy, first of all, I Pretty sure that's Tula's uh, polka dots, which I love. I bought when I when I walked into the store and they had Tula's polka dots. I bought it all. I could. The devil made me do it. So she's floating it with those white uh, triangles, and then she's not sure if she's gonna do anything more with it. But also, I believe in the notes uh, you said something like at the bottom you were gonna let some of those star points 
poke on through. So I'm really looking forward to seeing this finish. And you guys, again, I, I can't go through every single one, which breaks my heart because what's going on in the forum is amazing. Okay, Sumar, you were the gal that said you had to evacuate and you came back and you couldn't even wrap your head around it. You are so wrapping your head around this. My heart is screaming with joy. You guys, look at the shape that she's working with. This thing is going to be insane. I love it. I mean, basically, you've got a hexagon, but then like, okay, let's take that center empty hexagon. It took me a little bit to see this. Go to the block below. And then she's added on a little point. So now you've got like little rough cut diamonds. This is amazing. Amazing. You must finish it. I can't wait to see it. Okay, this one is grayed out, and I'm sorry about that, but um, this is Grady's. Oh, Grady, it's grayed out, and I'm sorry for that. I tried, for some reason, my computer wasn't cooperating and or my brain wasn't cooperating. You want to bet? And um, Grady said something to the effect of she just is ready to give up on this. Oh, my gosh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. What you have going there is magnificent. Keep it going. It is fabulous. And, and that happens sometimes when you're about eh, three quarters of the way through, you just kind of have to push through it. So I, I love what's going on there. And I could it, sometimes see it on my computer full brightness and it was magnificent. Just keep pushing through it. Let's go to, wait, maybe this one with Grady is better. For some reason I have you up here now. Okay. Here's another one. Why <laughs> aren't you popular? Okay. Bus mama. Now we're going to talk about inner borders. What bus mama had to do was figure out the math of the um, squares on point in relationship to the beautiful star in the center. And then she could determine how fat to do that um that inner sashing. On the quilt that I'm working on, oh, you know what? I bet we could look at that maybe right now and then come back to this. Oh, I pray this is it. Okay, good. Those half square triangles were cut at, cut at five and an eighth. If I put a sashing in, let's say look at the left, the right, top or bottom, they would never fit because I would have thrown the math off. And so I had to, now if I did put sashing in, I'd have to adjust the size of those outside blocks. But I really wanted those half square triangles to float organically off of the uh, quilt. So as soon as you put in, if you're not just putting on a straight, um, a straight, border, which I rarely, rarely just throw a border on because I think so many times it detracts. It doesn't really add anything. Um, that At that point, you don't have to really think about what size the inner border is. But if you're continuing some sort of piecing, you have to think about it big time. All right. So let's talk about the backing. It's so scientific how I do it. You're going to be so impressed. You better get out your calculators, your T-squares, and your tape measures and take tons of notes. What I do is I pin it up on the wall like this. Then I go to my stash and I pick some prints that are, um, that are suitable and go with it. And then I sew it together. Are you following it right now? Now, the, oh, the other thing I wanna say is because this uh, has so much white in it. Don't go cuckoo on your back with colors because it will sh it can show through. That has happened to me, okay? Then I went and I chose some more fabric that was from this per particular collection. I had to seam it together and then I sewed it down. You can see that it's bigger than the quilt top. And then there it is. I then cut out my batting believe, you know, I, I'm using, uh, 80, 20 in this case, case quilter select 80, 20. And I didn't include this picture, but go to the store and look at, or maybe take advantage of tool school. Look at the cosplay 
scissors. They're huge and you can cut through about 12 layers of batting at once. Uh, we do carry them in our store, but you might want to take advantage of the, the tool school too. So uh, it's really cool. Okay, so now we have to baste it. And when you baste, there's so many different ways to baste. In the olden days, I would get down on my hands and knees um, if I was hand quilting and I would baste with thread and needle. And then I couldn't walk for three days. Then I, when I kind of started dabbling in machine quilting, I would do the safety pin bit on the floor. And then I couldn't walk for days. Then I uh, went a little bit to spray basting. And my concern with spray basting, excuse me, is that you, first of all, I've got to do it indoors. You've got, and you're, I don't think you're supposed to, but I don't know. I have nowhere in my backyard to do it. So then you've got the, the fumes, you have the overspray, you've got all this. So when in working with Kay at Quilter Select, excuse me, I um, said we need a really, really fine powder. There are some powders out there that are activated by the iron. There are some to get it to stick. There are some out there already, but they're not as fine as ours. Also, this stuff will not gum up your sewing machine needle. So we tried to make a video yesterday, and and then I go, oh, I'm doing it wrong, and then actually did it Saturday. And then yesterday, John was, was editing it, and I, he said, what do you want me to do? I said, I can't even remember, because your brain, my, our brains are fried right now, okay? And um, I know a lot of you have been through it, so you understand. So we just went to the Quilter Select site, and there's a bunch of videos on how to use these products, and we just clipped out the part on how you baste a larger quilt. And I want to say this, and I'm not sure if I, well, let's watch the video, and then I'll see if I need to say more, okay? Here we go. I've taken my ironing board and I have pushed it up to my table at the exact same height. So this is how I manage a larger piece. So I start with my batting, my backing, and I'm going to put free fuse on here. Shake it on. Go down the line. If it's a bigger quilt, do keep, iron this on and then go and do the next section. So here's this. I'm going to iron and again all irons are different you're gonna to have to figure out what temperature works for you on my wonderful little Panasonic I have it on full speed high all right so I've done one end now this is the trick I'm going to turn it all around and this is what I've just fused right here. I'm going to put that up here on my table. I'm going to lift up the backing and it will naturally stop peeling where the free fuse ended. Here, let me pull this down here. I'm going to put some more free fuse on. There you go. And then iron it again. And basically, I'm going to work from one end of the quilt or the backing to the other. Okay, there we go. Then, I'm going to move it. I'm going to fold it back, put more free fuse in it, and there you go. There we go. Okay, so here's what I need to say. As far as batting goes, um, <clears throat> it doesn't work so well on wool. Our wool, it just kind of falls through. So I would do it like on our 80-20 or our 100%. Um, the other thing, why did I write cut size down? Oh, when, if you're a brand new quilter, let's, you're, let's say your quilt, let's say your quilt is this big, okay? You're going to want the batting to hang out about two inches and the backing about two inches and that gives it wiggle room so you want you don't want to trim it exactly to that after you've basted it because it can shift so keep your extra on the edge all right um, keep your iron start with medium 
medium hot, no steam. I did not hold the iron down along in that. I, t I take my time more than that. And I don't, I'm actually shocked it did uh, stick, but you just put it down and you go one, two, three, one, two, three, and just kind of take your time going over the whole thing. First I do the batting and I put the backing on. Then I turn it over and I do the same thing with the top as I did the back. And then what I do is then I turn it over again and I do the backing again. In fact, in this case, after I, on, on the real quilt that I'm working on over here, I actually ended up, after I did the front and the back, I pinned it to the wall and then did it again on there with, with my little Panasonic iron. So I did that. The other thing is that this little guy will do um, an, a large quilt, but it won't the first time because you're gonna put way too much stuff um, on it. So I'm gonna put some on my hand here. Just a little bit. And when I put it on my batting, then I rub it around and I can feel that it's equally distributed and there you go. In the olden days, I used to go like that well, that's absolutely not necessary. And what's going to happen is, is you're not going to melt all of it, and then it's going to go all over the place. I mean, it's not going to wreck anything, but you just don't need that much. You can make your iron go a little bit hotter and hotter. The hotter you go, the less you'll be able to reposition it, okay? So I love this stuff. I would try it on a small little piece. It actually, if you go to the whole video at quilterselect.com, it was about a four minute video and you can watch the whole thing. To me, it was a little too infomercially to be including in this. Um, but we do sell these in the store and we do have refills too, okay? So I don't know who sent this to me, but thank you. On page 123, of the book, it explains the grids. And let me just read it because it's what I was trying to say, only it's much more eloquent. <laughs> For easy reference, the blocks in the quick and easy block tool are categorized by grids. Grids are based on the number of divisions in the side of the block. A two grid block equals two by two. A three grid block equals three by three divisions and so on. And I think it's just to help you understand. So this is uh, actually three by three, and I don't know why they call it a nine patch, but they do. They try to confuse you on purpose, all right? So, okay. Did I tell you what I think I'm gonna do after um, kind of getting the things that are, are emergency things? Uh, I'm gonna get a suitcase and I'm gonna uh, put some quilts in it and I'm gonna ship them up to my friend in Mendocino. I think I called and I said, do you guys get fires up there? I mean, she's on the coast. Cause my daughter's like, when they get fires up there, not not really, Mendocino, when I talk about Mendocino, it's more like proper, you know, I mean like Mendocino County. <clears throat> and so I thought, you know, I've got the time, I'm gonna do it, you know, and, and she's got plenty of room in her house and all that. So that is one thing that I'm going to do. Um, the other thing I told her is that she is my evacuation plan. <laughs> if we have to leave here, that's where I'm going to go. So, but I, you know, I'm not, I can't worry about it. The, the fireman said it's not going to hit in Livermore. It's just not, it, we're, but, and now they're just saying, you know, don't be dumb. Just kind of have your papers in order and stuff like that. And um, it's real interesting, the stuff I've chosen. Not, not that many. My daughter said, let's pick something that represents each member of the family, like grandpas and grandmas and stuff like that. So we were on the phone saying, okay, well, I've got this and I've got this and I've got that. So that was kind of interesting. So um, John, you're in there watching, I believe. And I am piecing on our um, on the uh, basket quilt, and it's going to be fun. What that project is going to be is going to be teaching you how to work in multiple size blocks and how fun they play together. It will be a lot more traditional than what we're doing here. Here comes John. And I know this is really hard for some of you, and I really applaud you for sticking with it. Is there anything else I need to say? Oh, um... 
the show this week with Freddie Morand and um, Sujata Shaw. And uh, it is uh, $19.95 for six months access. If this is not a show you want to miss, if you're not a member, this is the time to join. So here, um, this is called Quilter Select Free Views. And it comes in a little plastic bag in here. It comes in here and you pull this thing out, you dump it in. And then you push this in. Don't push this in too far. My girlfriend was using it and this fell out. No big deal. Just put it back in. So, and, hey, Roberta from Monterey. I know who you are. Does the powder adhesive watch out when you are done with the quilt? No, it is polyester. It is, it is, it is like air. You don't even know it's in there, okay? And it has a silicon in it so that it's not going to gum up your needle. Sorry, didn't see that, John. John, did you put something up there? Well, today's going to be a weird day because one thing you guys may or may not know about me, if I don't get my sleep, it is a flipping disaster. <laughs> so you're looking at it right here. And tonight I have some an interview I'm going to do with um, Sakwa. So I'm going to get some Red Bull or something like that before that. So you guys have a great day. And I do have a strategy with my quilting and I look forward to showing it to you. Of course, it involves straight line quilting. And I've been working on my Q20 and I was having um, some issues with it. And then I called Amanda Murphy and she told me, um, she, she told me what to do on my Q20. Try the knot function if you have a Q20. And what happens is, is when you use the heel press, the needle goes up and the foot goes up. It's not like the knot thing that's on your other uh, Bernina machine. So, um, Stacey, oh, shoot, there was one that just came up. What was it? I missed it. It's free fuse for machine quilting only. Oh, it's free fuse for machine quilting only. Um, I haven't tried it for hand quilting. Uh, if I were going to hand quilting, you know, honestly, you know what I do? I take it to my machine quilter and I say, please baste it for me. And it costs me 20 bucks. That's what I do when I do hand quilting, hand quilting. So, I mean, it's not, it's not goopy and stuff like that, but I, I don't know. I haven't used it. Now I know I have other people have told me they have, but I'm going for first hand here. So my hair looks great. It's going to look really good on Wednesday. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so, anyways, you guys, thank you for choosing to spend time with me. Taping's over in Texas. Apparently, it went very, very well. And um, we'll see what's next, right? Let's get to th let's get through 2020. Rear view mirror 2020. Goodbye, right? <laughs> Have a good one. Bye-bye.